welcome to Sculpture Studios. With the theatres gradually reopening here in the UK, we hoped that a project would come through our doors with something sculptural for the stage. Now, we haven't been disappointed, and we really hope you guys aren't either, as this project is for Handel's Amadigi being performed at the Garsington Opera in Buckinghamshire. The fifth Italian opera that Handel wrote for the English theatre, but supposedly one of his lesser known works, this particular performance includes five actors, a troupe of dancers, and a couple of very special theatrical stage pieces built by your favourite family run 3D commercial art studio. We're going to be creating a giant orange egg and an oversized gloss black stallion. So, you may be asking, what does an egg and a horse have to do with the Amadigi Opera? Well, we didn't actually ask, so we're going to have to leave you guys to find out for yourself and report back to us if you ever manage to go and see this performed. Not sure if you need to be fluent in Italian, though, but I think there's subtitles. For now, we're going to take you a little behind the scenes, as we've got a date for opening night to meet. Starting with the horse here, the brief is to have this created larger than life at about 7.5 feet tall. Our contact, Robin Morgan, the art department supervisor of props, has informed us that the director and designer, Nisha Jones, wants this to be a fine balance between realism and simplistic, so not hyper-realistic and certainly not plastic, but a smooth blend between. Adam first blocks out the initial form in polystyrene, using numerous references provided by the client, as well as some references that we found ourselves to better improve the carve. For everyone out there familiar with our practices, you'd know by now that Aiden's using a handheld hot wire for the initial blocking out, before working down to nail and wire brushes. This is one of those projects where we thought, let's take you guys through the entire process and try not to miss anything out. A lot of people say they come for the carving most of all, other people say they come for the dancing and the silliness depending on the video, so horses for courses. Either way, we've tried to include as much of the horse carving process as possible, so you guys can see it from start to finish. You don't really need me waffling on the whole time, so for now, enjoy. To ensure we're staying faithful to a true horse form as much as possible, we've pulled up a few George Stubbs equestrian references. These show a detailed anatomy of size and musculature. We know there are bound to be a few expert eyes out there, both on this channel as well as in the theatre, so we want this to be something that's pleasing to an audience, rather than something that stands out for the wrong reasons. Thank you. 
the egg itself is being created at around 6 foot tall. In a way, it's even more important that a shape like this needs even more attention paid to it than the horse does. What is essentially just a large egg, well, there isn't really a just about it. More geometric shapes stick out like a sore thumb if there's anything slightly wrong with them. So compared to a horse where the average person might not know the ins and outs of a horse anatomy, the average person can tell if a square isn't quite a square or a circle wasn't completely round. So it's the same with this egg shape here. We need to make sure that the surface isn't uneven, the peripheral around the edges of both casts meet and match up perfectly, and an egg rolling around is a hard thing to keep still while you're trying to work on it. One half of the egg is being carved, and we're creating a fiberglass mould, whereby the interior needs to then be cleaned up, prepped for casting, where two casts are going to be laid up in glass fibre and extracted. What are you up to, Liam? I'm screwing on the big heads so that once we take this top piece out, uh, we'll be able to put it back together and join it and put the squish together um, so that it'll make a nice seamless outside again. We're taking this part out so that when we come to join these two halves together, we have to get in through the middle, do uh, fiberglass along the seam line so it's nice and strong, and then we can put the shelf back on top and close it all up. Can you show us a big head close up? That's it. Thank That's you. It. Thank you. In order for the join line of the two casts to be securely laminated together, we need to ensure that this trapdoor section is large enough for one of our team to get inside, but we also need to make sure it's not too large so that it doesn't compromise the shape or strength of the egg and it saves on too much cleaning up work around the edge of the trapdoor later. This is going to be a completely sealed unit, of course we have to make sure nobody is sealed inside first. <laughs> Both the egg and the horse are each going to have a base created for them to stand on. They're both going to be permanently installed, so there should be no need to physically handle the sculptures themselves. The bases are being made from wood, and once again we're ensuring that these are completely sealed units so that no screws, seams or join lines can be visible to the audience. We're using a laser here just to ensure as much as we can that the egg is sitting as neutral and upright as possible. We're ensuring this is in the correct position before we laminate this to the base as it's one of those things where even if this is fractionally off this will be irritatingly visible to the naked eye. At this stage, with the horse nearing its carving completion, we invite our client down to the studio to take a look at the work. Having Robin visit during this part of the process means that changes can still be made before we go onto the horse with any glass fibre. Changes during the polystyrene stage, though they still do take time, is far more time and cost effective than to have changes made further down the line. Robin is liaising with Nisha, who at this point is no doubt doing a million and one things at the other end to get the show exactly where she wants it to be. But in some ways, this is one of the nice things about approaching us with the work, the fact that we can create something completely out of the way here at our studio, and Nisha and her creative team like Robin can rest assured that everything is getting done and we can hopefully make things as stress and hassle free as possible for them. For the egg, we're going over with layers of 2K car body primers, sanding the surface back down and repeating the process again and again until we get to a stage where we're happy. 
The eventual finish for this egg is still a little up for discussion, so we'll tackle that later on. For now, with the horse carving approved and signed off by the client, we're moving on to the next stages of sanding the entire surface of the horse down, protecting the polystyrene form, and then going on with resin and glass fibre. Cue the secretly sourced sticky back tinfoil for our protective barrier, where we're going over every single inch of the sculpture to ensure there are no breaches. With everything covered, we begin going over with a sturdy build-up of glass fibre. We ideally want to get this as neat as possible, as there's already going to be plenty of cleaning up work to do later on with the gloss finish. We're keeping the polystyrene inside the sculpture, as although this may not be massively effective on the legs, it makes the entire piece that little bit stronger, and certainly feels less hollow if it's ever touched. Nice bit of filly you got there, Liam. <laughs> Don't have a mare. How's it going, Kev? Going all good. Nice and stable. Got a tail to sell there. Odd couple. Once again, the laborious task of sanding, cleaning up and repeating the process again and again commences. With this requiring such a high gloss finish, we need to get the surface as car body worthy as we possibly can before this can be painted. Any single imperfection in the surface will immediately show up with the high polish. You missed a bit. Yeah. Don't be fooled, it's not another client coming down to the studio to check on the work process, it's just Aiden's older brother. <laughs> Basically just here to bug us all, putting his two pence in pretty much where it's not needed. Thanks John. Bit by bit and layer by layer, the surface of the horse is gradually getting to the point where it's at the level we need it to be, but it's worth putting in the extra work now, rather than have to strip it back, re-sand, re-prime, and go over again with an expensive gloss paint if the surface simply isn't good enough. Though we're gradually getting a full squad back into the studio, one person we really hoped wouldn't make it back from furlough is Rocky. I suppose he's here to stay, but he's really not making his pay grade, to be honest. We're now approaching the finishing point on the horse, where Aiden is going over with the final, final layer of 2K car body primer, so the horse is prepped for a gloss black finish. This has taken a lot of work, a lot of hands, and I'm not talking about the height of the horse, and now it won't be grey for long. For long, that's just a horse. <clears throat> it's time to get some finishes on the sculptures now, the egg of which is proving to be somewhat of an issue. Where the finish of a beautiful black gloss on the horse was never up for discussion from day one, the egg, however, is one of those finishes where the client needs to actually see the finish on the job before determining if it's right for the project. Unfortunately, this process involves Aiden respraying the egg three times over, and by that I mean completely stripping back any lacquer, paint, and primer off of the job, repriming, respraying, relacquering, and then buffing up the surface three times over. But this was all worth it to get to a point where Nisha was happy with the eventual finish. 
This black beauty here on the other hand, never a problem. Aiden's now going to spend the next couple of days buffing up the entire surface of the horse with a high gloss polish. Pedicure going on here. Yeah. Or is it a manicure? Because it's his front legs, yeah. front arms, I don't know. Yeah, probably a manicure if it's his front, but a pedi on his feet. Cool. Manicure. He's having a nightmare with this. Oh god, I think we've had all these already. Here we have the finished horse, a big black horse, um, bigger than life size, which makes it even more impressive, I think, because it's um, slightly un unusual stallion. Without its, um, its undercarriage, they didn't, didn't want to see that underneath there, so we didn't include that area. Got a beautiful black finish, nice shine on the whole thing, and we're really hopeful that the client's happy with it. With everything pretty much complete here in the workshop, we're inviting Robin down once more for approval and sign-off of the work before it can leave the studio. It's always great to get a client's reaction, especially when the progress of the work from their last visit to now is such a dramatic leap. Though this is still behind a face mask, the fact we can tell how pleased the client is with the project is always the main thing for us. Aiden's demonstrating how these are designed to be lifted on pallet trucks so they can easily be manoeuvred around the stage into position. Then it's simply a few final finishing touches from us before the transport arrives and then it's off to Buckinghamshire. Since 2011, the Garsington Opera has moved from its 21-year home at Garsington Manor Estate to the Wormsley Estate in Stoken Church. If you've never experienced or even heard of this venue before, then you're in for a little something special if you ever do manage to go. Situated in the middle of the estate's beautiful gardens, this cross between an inside and outside modern pavilion is a venue that allows for something different to the everyday theatre-goer. You're relying on the elements and the atmosphere on whatever day or night you visit to enhance the experience. This performance of Handel's Amadigi, scheduled between the 19th of June and the 24th of July 2021, catches us on the brink of theatres beginning to open again here during what we hope to be the end of the pandemic, fingers crossed. So this non-enclosed theatre space seems appropriate for the time in which this is set. We'd like to thank Robin Morgan and Nisha Jones for approaching us with this project. It's been fantastic to work for theatres again, especially after so long, and we look forward to any theatre work with you guys again in the future. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and remember, you can now follow Aidan Hines Sculpture Studios on our brand new Instagram page, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>